Hi, thank you for watching and uh, happy Friday and also happy LGBTQ plus history month. Uh, my name is Alice Nichols. I am a music therapist with Chilton and I am also queer and non-binary. I, um, I personally ID as gender flux, which means I vary between feeling completely female and feeling totally neutral um, on any given day. Um, I discovered this about myself about three years ago and uh, that's the term that I found that works for me. Lots of people identify in different, uh, different ways. You've got gender fluid, gender queer, neutral, agender, bigender. There's so many different definitions. There are as many definitions as there are non-binary people. And more and more people these days are exploring their gender and finding the words for the identity and the pronouns that fit them. <clears throat> I use um, she, her or they, them pronouns kind of interchangeably. I often have to remind people of my pronouns and sometimes it's kind of hard to call that out. But I'm going to talk to you just for a little bit today about what it's like to be a non-binary therapist. The world, it seems, is full of binaries and boxes and we, without knowing it, often work from a default of people being straight and cisgender. Cisgender just means you identify with the gender that you were born with um, or the gender you were assigned at birth, some people say. Um, I don't ID as cisgender. I also don't ID as transgender, which a lot of non-binary people do. And you'll find people who identify as either cis or, well, not cis, but you'll, like, you'll find people who identify as trans and people who don't within the non-binary spectrum. It can be difficult sometimes to be non-binary as a therapist in a profession that already sits outside a lot of boxes anyway, to be in yet another different category. As a therapist though, I've worked with all kinds of people who have, who have issues of identity loss or things around identity that they want to explore in lots of ways, be it dementia, brain injury, degenerative illness or mental health conditions. And the topic of identity is a huge part of our day-to-day -day at Chilton as therapists anyway, from celebrating the identities of our individual therapists, like me, um, to working out the professional identity of our whole organisation, which we've been doing lately. It can sometimes be difficult to broach the topic with clients. For example, if they see my pronouns, which are on my name and on Zoom calls when we're doing digital therapy, or with young children, especially if they can't decide if I look like a girl or a boy. I find though, if I've been upfront with people about it, they tend to accept it, smile and go on with the session. I am incredibly lucky to be in a position to be able to do this safely, to come out to people safely because I am privileged in other ways. I'm white, I'm middle class, not to mention I have an incredibly accepting and enthusiastic team of colleagues at Chilton Music Therapy. I am so, so lucky. At present, there isn't much music therapy provision specifically for non-binary and trans people in the UK. We are setting up at Chilton a digital music therapy group for trans and non-binary adults who want to explore issues of voice and identity. And I hope that we as therapists can work more with non-binary people in the future, both as clients and colleagues, um, and continue to celebrate diversity in gender and sexuality, not just during Pride Month, but all the time. Being, um, being queer, non-binary and a therapist is a landscape I am still navigating because it merges my personal identity with my professional one. But I don't think that is something to be wary of. I feel it adds to my skills as a therapist and makes me more open to new ideas and to new identities. I'm going to finish with a little quote from, um, from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, if anyone watches it, which is that every time someone steps up and says who they are, the world becomes a better, more interesting place. Chances are that you know a non-binary person or a trans person, even if you don't think you do. And the best thing, I think, that you can do for your non-binary clients, colleagues and friends is to believe us when we say who we are and support us in what we do. I'm now going to do a song by Grace Petrie, who is an out and proud queer songwriter. Um, she describes herself as a lefty, feminist, lesbian, socialist protest singer or something like that. And this is one of hers, which I think is really appropriate and really lovely for Pride Month. <laughs> 